So let us move on now to the next chapter, which deals with acid-base equilibria and solubility equilibria. So a lot of the equilibrium principles that we saw in the earlier um, past two chapters will come into play again. So a lot of applications will be involved here in this particular discussion. So the first thing I want to talk about here is what is known as the common iron effect. The common iron effect is basically the shift in equilibrium that is caused by the addition of a compound having an iron in common with the substance which is already dissolved. All right, so as an example, um, if we look at a mixture of sodium acetate and acetic acid, all right, what we're gonna see here is that in this case, the common ion will suppress the dissociation of the weak acid um, or weak bases if there was a base involved. So here is this example. As I said before, sodium acetate, a mixture of sodium acetate, which is a strong electrolyte, and acetic acid, which is a weak acid. So because sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte, it will undergo complete dissociation. So you'd expect to have a high concentration of acetate ion present in this solution. On the other hand, in the case of acetic acid, because its dissociation is weak, the concentration of acetate is very low, all right? So what we have here is a common ion, which would be the acetate ion being produced by both dissociation. And the presence of this large amount of acetate ion will result in the equilibrium for this dissociation to shift to the left and therefore reducing the extent of dissociation of the acetic acid. So that's basically a one example of the common ion where the presence of the common ion already in the solution, the acetate ion, will reduce the level of dissociation in the case of acetic acid. So if you were to compare the percent ionization or dissociation of acetic acid in the absence of this, it would be higher compared to in the presence of the large amount of the acetate ion. All right, so that's one of many examples of the common ion effect um, that one can find, all right? Okay, now let's look at further um, the resulting pH of a solution of the weak acid, and this could be acetic acid or any other weak acid. So we're just going to use a generic formula HA here and the salt of that acid. So we're going to use the sodium salt of that acid, right? So they're both in a mixture. Um, we have the salt dissociating completely. The weak acid will dissociate partially. So what we're going to do now is write down the Ka expression, the dissociation constant expression um, for the weak acid, which is this right here, right? And what we're going to do is rearrange it so that we end up with a concentration of H plus by itself equals to Ka times the concentration of HA times A minus, right? So if we were to find the pH of this solution, right? pH would be minus log of H plus. And if you do the minus log on this side, you have to do the minus log on this side. And this would be the result, right? So this would be um, the same as this. Now, there's a slight um, change that is happening going from here to here. If you switch these two, the A minus above and the HA above to get this, then this sign becomes positive. This is something that you should have learned from your math courses, all right? Okay, where is my... Okay, good. So this is the equation that we're going to work with, right? The minus log of H plus would be the pH. The minus log of Ka would be the pKa. And we're going to still have this part here, log of A minus over the HA minus, right? So this would be the formula that is used to calculate the pH of such a mixture, a mixture of a weak acid and the salt of that acid. And this is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, all right? So if you have such a solution, all you have to do is plug the numbers in and you find the pH and that's it, all right? Okay, now, um, or another way of stating it is just this right here. This is basically the same thing as this. pH is equal to pKa, whoops, plus log of the conjugate acid, I'm sorry, log of the conjugate base divided by the con by the acid, all right? Okay, so you can apply that equation to solve this particular problem. What is the pH of a solution containing 0.30 M formic acid and 0.52 M potassium formate. So it's a mixture of the conjugate base of the weak acid, which is the formate ion here, and the weak acid, right? So we can set up an ice table for the weak acid. Um, the initial concentration of the um, formic acid is 0.30 M, and the initial concentration of the H plus is zero. 
and that of the formate ion would be 0.52, right? Now, in order for equilibrium to be established, the reaction would have to shift to the right, which means that as far as the formic acid is concerned, its change is going to be minus x. As far as the H plus is concerned, its change is going to be plus x. And for the formate ion, its change is going to be um, plus x as well. So at equilibrium, these are the state of affairs for the different species involved. And therefore, um, we see that, um, well, the common ion effect will um, occur because, of course, you have formate ions pushing the equilibrium to the left. Um, so basically, we can make an approximation based on that, that x is so small that x um, is effectively zero. So 0 0.30 minus x can approximate to 0.3, and 0.52 plus x can approximate to 0.52. And then all we have to do is put the numbers here. And um, the pKa, of course, you'd have to get. So there are tables available. In fact, if you look in Canvas on the files, and I think it's on the tables, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to see a list of Ka values. All right, And then you can find a pKa value. So that's what is done here. The pKa value for formic acid is here. So that goes here, right? Um, and of course, you plug in the numbers for the concentrations of the formate and the um, formic acid. And when you do your math, you're going to end up with your pH being equal to 4.01. All right. So that's basically how this equation can be used to calculate the pH of such a mixture. All right. Okay. Now, why do we talk about this kind of mixture? Well, because this mi mixture has a special name. It's called a buffer solution. And a buffer solution is basically a solution that has a mixture of a weak acid and the conjugate base, or a weak base and the conjugate acid. All right? So basically, it's made up of a weak acid along with the salt of the weak acid or a weak base and um, the salt of the weak base. All right? Now, the key thing you need to remember is that both of them must be present. If both of them are not present, then basically it would not be a buffer solution. And why are buffer solutions important? Because buffer solutions are solutions that are able to resist changes of pH when you add small amounts of either acid or base, right? So if you look at an equimolar mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate, so let's say you have a buffer that is made up of these two components. Then when you add a strong acid, the strong acid will react with the basic part of the buffer. In other words, the formate ion. And therefore, what will happen is that the formate ion, which is present in large amounts, will basically convert this strong acid to a weaker acid. And that weaker acid will have very little effect on the pH, right? So therefore, when you add a strong acid, the basic part of the buffer will convert that strong acid to a weaker acid, which will have very little effect on the pH. On the other hand, if you had a strong base, then that base will react with the acidic portion of the buffer, converting the base, the strong base, to a weaker base, which is known as the acetate ion in this case. And therefore, this, again, will have very little effect on the pH of the solution. So that's basically how a buffer works, right? The buffer works by basically mopping up any added acid or base and convert them into weaker acids and bases, which will basically um, reduce the change in the pH. Now, the pH will change, but the pH will change only by a very small amount because it's a buffer. If it was a non-buffer solution, then when you add a strong acid, the pH will drop several units. And when you add a strong base, the pH will increase by several um, units. All right. Okay. So this is a graph which basically demonstrates the difference between the behavior of a buffer as opposed to something else like um, pure water right so you'll notice that um well let me explain what's happening here so this is the y-axis here which has the ph scale and down here you have the amount of acid in this case hydrochloric acid being added and what do we notice here in the case of water when you start adding acid there's a severe drop from um seven to about 2 when you add 0.02 moles of HCl, and then it drops further. That is not so in the case of the buffer solution. The buffer solution, when you add acid, you see that there's a gradual, very slight change in the pH. And that's basically how buffers behave, all right? And that will continue until the buffer is exhausted. In other words, 
in this case, when you're adding the HCl, um, if you add enough to um, neutralize all the basic parts of the buffer, then the buffer will lose its capacity to um, resist changes in pH and therefore will start acting like any other solution when you add more acid to it. Okay, so here is an example. Um, the question is asking, which of the following are buffer solution or systems? So the first one is potassium fluoride and hydrogen fluoride, all right? And the answer to this question is that this is, yes, a buffer solution. Why? Because you have a weak acid in the form of hydrofluoric acid, and you have the salt of the weak acid, which is potassium fluoride. So therefore, because you have, um, well, this should be a HF here, so please make a note of this. This should be HF. It's a weak acid, and F minus, then we know that it's a buffer solution. Okay, what about in the case of B? Well, in the case of B, we have a strong acid. So by virtue of the fact that you have a strong acid here, then that cannot be a buffer solution, all right? Because a buffer solution is made up of a weak acid and the conjugate base of that weak acid. And then C, um, sodium carbonate mixed with sodium bicarbonate. Well, in this particular case, the bicarbonate would be the base and the, I'm sorry, the carbonate would be the base and the bicarbonate would be the acidic part of the buffer, which is weak. The bicarbonate ion is weak. Um, so therefore we have a weak acid and the conjugate base of that acid. So therefore, in this case, this is a buffer solution, all right? So it's very important that you're able to identify the components of a buffer solution based on the definition. Remember the definition is a buffer solution is a mixture of a weak acid and the conjugate base of that acid or a weak base and the conjugate acid of that base, all right? Okay, um, I'm gonna stop here. Um, the next slide will be dealing with this example right here, all right? Okay, until next time.